Welcome to this class on neuroscience of human movement. In this class, we will discuss parietal and premotor cortex. So, this is part 3 of our discussion on this topic. So, in the last class, we saw specific regions of the parietal and premotor cortex are responsible for generating movement plans concerning reaching and grasping. Right. In this class, we will see how grasping an object requires sensory information about the physical properties of this object, right. for example, the dimension, for example, the texture, okay. specific motor acts and their association with parietal cortex and uh, the correlation between motor acts and the activity in the ventral premotor cortex. Right. So, we saw in the last class that uh, neurons in uh, AAP and uh, PFG regions are responsible for hand movements and uh, in region F4 there are receptive fields anchored to body parts. No, these are uh, active the body moves, but uh, not active when the eyes move not. So, that means, these are body related uh, fields is it not and area F 5 also holds neurons that have specialized function in coordinating hand to mouth movements right. And also we have already seen in previous class that uh, the primary motor cortex has a disproportionately large representation of uh, the hand. Also what is known is that uh, depending on the task and uh, depending on the type of neuron, there are different classes that can be found. For example, there can be three kinds of tasks that we can consider. You can manipulate an object in light, for example, there is light here and uh, in light I am writing with this pen, this is object manipulation in light. Suppose, this room was dark and I am trying to manipulate this object that is manipulation in dark, right. In a dark room I am manipulating the object. Now, a third possibility is that an object is present, I am not touching it, I am just fixating my eyes on this object, right. This involves object fixation, but no real action by the hand, right. This is called as object fixation, okay. Now, there are also neurons that are specialized for each of this function or more than one of these functions. For example, some neurons may be motor dominant, these neurons will be active during manipulation whether during uh, manipulation in light or manipulation in dark, both of these times these neurons will be motor dominant, right. Some neurons will be visual dominant, these neurons are expected to be active during object fixation and manipulation in light, but since manipulation in darkness does not involve any visual component, these neurons will not be active during manipulation in darkness. So, these neurons will be active during object fixation and manipulation in light these neurons will be active during manipulation in light and manipulation in darkness, but not object fixation. The visual motor uh, dominant neurons are uh, active both during manipulation in light, manipulation in darkness and in object fixation. So, visual dominant neurons are active during fixation and manipulation in light, motor dominant neurons are active during manipulation in light and dark, but not during fixation, right. The visual motor neurons do both of these functions combined. So, there are discrete separate distinct sets of neurons that perform each of these functions. Okay. Also important to note is the correlation between uh, specific motor acts and uh, the activity in the premotor cortex, ventral premotor cortex, right. So, there are neurons that are active only when food is brought to the mouth. Suppose food is placed in a source and uh, the instruction is to bring the food pellet to the mouth, right. Then a specific set of neurons are active only when the food is brought to the mouth and hand to object neurons. These neurons involve transportation of the food pellet from one place to another destination. 
for example, if this is a food source from here transported to a different destination involves hand to object neurons. Right. So, dynamics and stimulus modality does not change the behavior of neurons. So, essentially not the kinetics or kinematics of uh, the movement that uh, dictate the activity of these neurons. These neurons are active depending on the context, right? context specificity whether the object has to be moved to the mouth or whether the object has to be moved to a different uh, destination depending on that different neurons are active. So, again this means this is context specific thing context specific right. Also note that you can have different 3D uh, objects well, different shapes for example right different 3D objects. It has been shown that different sets of neurons are uh, responsive depending on which particular shape is being shown to them. Okay. So, shape dependent response of specific groups of neurons has also been demonstrated. Also another thing to note is that there are neurons that are specialized for precision and power grip. Let us define this very briefly. So, precision grip is that when you grip an object between the thumb and a fingertip for example, like this in this case between the thumb and the middle finger in this case between the thumb and the index finger now, right. This is called precision grip or pinch grip when I use multiple fingers like this, this is also called as prismatic precision grip, right. Suppose I am grasping this object like this, right. Now, I am covering my palm, I am surrounding my palm over this object in a cylindrical shape, this is also called as a cylindrical grip or power grip. Okay. It turns out that different sets of neurons are uh, specialized or active during different types of grip. So, depending on whether the grip is precision or power, right, different sets of neurons in the ventral premotor cortex are active. So, this is crucial right. in humans an important ability uh, that distinguishes humans from animals is the ability to manipulate objects. Dexterous manipulation of objects is a crucial evolutionary uh, advantage that the humans have. So, that means these uh, neurons must be more specialized, more well developed in humans is a hypothesis that we can have. But the point is that this is present even in animals, even in uh, monkeys. Okay. These are different types of graphs that have been uh, shown. Uh, those who are interested can actually check the paper, the book by Napier, that is a book by Napier on hand function that uh, discusses all of these types of uh, this. Okay. So, in summary grasping an object requires sensory information about its physical properties. So, what is the object, how big it is, what is the size and the specific motor acts and its association with the uh, parallel motor cortex and correlation between motor acts and uh, ventral premotor cortex activity. So, okay. so, with this uh, we come to the end of this lecture, thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.